Do you need to eat three meals a day, especially breakfast, uh, which is said uh, breakfast is the most important meal of the day. Breakfast is the most important meal of the day. The, it's the most important. You got to eat breakfast. You need to eat breakfast every day. Have you heard that before? You know, everybody's saying it. You need to eat three meals a day, especially breakfast. Everyone is saying it, but it, so if everyone is saying it, then it must be true. It's got, don't we go by the consensus? You know, if the majority of people are saying it, it must be true. All of that and more here on Nutri Warriors Health and Recovery. Hello, my name is Andres, and I'm from the Bronx of New York City, the unhealthiest county in the state of New York for nine consecutive years. And that is about to change, ladies and gentlemen. I am the man who have 14 diseases, and by the grace of God Almighty, Christ Almighty, I'm disease-free. Happy New Year's. Happy 2020. May 2020 bring you health and joy. You know, we often hear uh, you got to eat three meals a day, especially breakfast. Breakfast is the most important meal of the day. I'm sure everybody heard that before. Maybe that's why we have a uh, obesity problem in America. Uh, we're eating too much. Maybe I'm just saying. You know, maybe that may be the that may be the problem. That may be the problem. We're eating too much. Some of you eat at least. Oh, there's a little beep here. Let me shut this beep off. I'm sorry about that. Uh, where was I? Some of you um, eat at least six meals a day. Okay, breakfast, snack, lunch, snack, dinner, snack. Six meals a day. Some of you eat snacks all day. That used to be me. Snacks all day, constantly eating and eating and eating. On the other side of the fence, I hear people saying, you should fast. Fasting is good for you. Hmm. I'm confused. I'm freaking confused. When should I fast? How often should I fast? Should I fast after the most important meal of the day, breakfast? Or do I skip breakfast and begin fasting after breakfast? I'm so confused, man. Which is it? Eat it, uh, eat every day, uh, three meals a day? Uh, or do I fast a certain day, a Tuesday, a Wednesday, a Thursday? How many days do I fast? Uh, I'm confused. Help me, Obi-Wan. You're my only hope. <laughs> Help me, Obi-Wan. You're my only hope. You people got to stop watching Luke Skywalker and Mr. Spock. Mr. Spock and, and Luke Skywalker is not going to get you healthy. Wait a second. It's not Mr. Spock. It's the other guy. The other guy that breathes like he has asthma. Uh, you know, the uh, Darth Vader. That's the guy. I'm forgetting my uh, characters in my science fiction movies. Yeah, that boy needs some uh, some <laughs> omega threes and manganese. He's got a serious respiratory problem. Don't you hate when the health industry uh, changes their minds on certain subjects? Uh, you need to eat three meals a day and make sure all the basic food groups are in those meals. You know, the meat group, the dairy group, the fruit and vegetable group, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Then they will say, oh, ooh, well, dairy is bad for you. Forget that group. <laughs> Forget that group. The dairy is bad. Gee, thanks, FDA, Department of Health. All you guys are doing a bang-up job. Good, good job. Good job. Funny, my ancestors and most of your ancestors cooked with milk, regular milk, not low-fat and skim milk, regular milk. In fact, raw milk, straight from the cow. They cooked with milk, uh, they cooked with heavy cream, eggs, they made cheese, butter, and quite frankly, they didn't suffer these diseases that we have today. Mm, curious, huh? According to WebMD, um, I read an article in, uh, at WebMD. Uh, let me get that article for you. Sorry, I'm not prepared. Let me put it here. Uh, sorry about that. I'm uh, never prepared on this. Okay, I'm going to read just a little snippet, just a little piece. Uh, quote, one study, I don't know what that study is. WebMD didn't reference it, so I do not know what that study is. 
Uh, one study has indicated that people who follow a fasting diet may have better heart health than people who don't fast. Regular fasting, whatever regular fasting is, I have no idea what regular fasting is and how often should you fast, have no idea. Regular fasting and better heart health may also be linked to the way your body metabolizes cholesterol and sugar. Fasting may metabolize sugar and cholesterol more efficiently. Hmm. End of quote. Hmm. Apparently, this article claims a study shows fasting may be good for you. Maybe. May. Keyword there is may. What do we do when mankind is confused and medical science can't make up their minds? How about when science is not really sure? You know, they use those words may, probably. <laughs> Uh, they're not sure. They're not sure. When mankind is confused, as they always were since the beginning of time, uh, it's time to appeal to a higher source. God Almighty, you know, the all-knowing, eternal being that designed and created our bodies, if you're a creationist. He knows how our body operates. He knows what to do in order for us to stay healthy. The Bible, basic instruction before leaving earth. That's what the Bible stands for. I don't know who came up with that acronym, but uh, you got to love this guy, Yahweh Elohim. You got to love him. He's amazing. He tells us how to behave in society. There goes my phone. Sorry about that. I should have shut my phone off. Let me turn off my phone before I continue this. No, no, no. Not restart. Shut down. Sorry about that. Oh, by the way, I don't do editing because my uh, I don't have a good editing software, so I record straight through. Um, as I was saying, you got to love the Bible, uh, the God of the Bible, Yahweh Elohim. That's uh, his name in the Old Testament. Of course, his name is Jesus Christ. In the New Testament, I don't got time to go through the theology, uh, but he's amazing. He tells us how to behave in society, how to treat your neighbors, treat each other with respect. Uh, he also says, honor your mom, honor your dad. Don't dishonor them by behaving like an idiot in public. Uh, he also instructs, uh, instructs us how to worship him. In other words, don't follow these heathens and pagans, how they worship, worship me by my standards, saith the Lord. He also tells us to rest our bodies, okay? Don't work seven days a week. <laughs> Take a chill pill for a day, man. Take a chill pill. Let your body recharge. He knows your body. He also said rest the land. Interesting. The land also needs resting, not just our body, but the land itself. When the land is rested, it becomes more vital and more fertile. Your crops will be filled with nutrients because the soil, the soil becomes very fertile. God even tells us how to cook and prepare our meals. <laughs> Can you believe that? Uh, isn't it written that he is the king of kings, the lord of lords, and the chef of chefs? <laughs> it's in Revelation. Read it. It's in there. I read it. Okay. He, he even instructs us how to cook our meals, even how to cook the meal. He said in uh, Exodus to roast the lamb. Keyword there is roast. He didn't say fry some lamb chops with some olive oil and some canola oil. <laughs> He even tells us how to season our food. Isn't that something? Uh, he said, uh, put some spice and some herbs and some hyssop. Make it taste good. Make that, make that lamb taste good. He didn't say marinated with oils. <laughs> okay? He also tells us to fast. Whoa! Wait a second. Hold on a second. Somebody forgot to tell God, hey, what about breakfast, God? <laughs> what about breakfast? <laughs> you know, the most important meal of the day. 
<laughs> I don't remember reading in the Bible, you must eat three meals a day, especially breakfast. I don't remember reading that. God would have told us, <laughs> you got to eat three meals a day. God knows your body and how to keep it healthy all the days of your life. Shut your mouth for a while. Close it. This is why you people are fat. Shut your pie hole for a while. Shut it. You know? Some people fast for a day, uh, two or three days. Jesus fasted for 40 days. I don't recommend that. I do not recommend that. The apostles didn't fast for 40 days. In fact, fasting can be dangerous, especially if you're deficient in nutrients that protect the cardiovascular system. Those that live in biblical times didn't have to worry about deficiencies. Their food was super organic. You know, they didn't use pesticides and herbicides that neutralize the nutrients like we have today. Every time when they use pesticides and nutrients, and uh, herbicides, that it falls into the soil, and it's killing the organism. And that's why the organism is not giving the nutrients to the plant. Those chemicals are destroying the organism in the soil. This is one of the reasons why our food is depleted from nutrients, and we have to supplement 91 nutrients every day to stay healthy and to stay away from, and stay away from those bad foods. you got to stay away from the foods. That's another video for another time. There are several types of fasting in the Bible. You have the juice fast, the bread fast, uh, plain fasting, which is abstaining from food and drinking water. I fast once a week. Once a week, that's all I fast. I fast once a week. What the heck is going on? I turned off my phone. Oh, no, I... Oh, man, I think I hit restart. That's what it is. Power off, power off. Thank you very much. <laughs> Sorry about that once again. Um, where was I? Fasting. That's what I was talking about, fasting. Um, there are several types of uh, different types of fasting in the Bible. Um, you know, bread fast, abstaining from food and drinking water. Um, I, Like I was saying, I, I always fast once a week. I fast once. That's my definition of regular fasting. <laughs> Once a week. I fast every Monday. Every Monday I fast. Uh, the reason why I fast on Mondays, um, people are always inviting me to uh, weekend barbecues, weddings, birthdays, yada, yada, yada. It's impossible to fast on a weekend. Impossible. <laughs> You 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 gotta fast on Mondays. Mondays is the perfect time to fast. Nobody invites me to weddings on a Monday, okay, or even a Tuesday. Now, um, I don't drink water even on Monday. I know a lot of you are gonna say, "Oh, you should drink water." Yeah, you don't. No, you don't, unless it's the summer. You know, um, I only drink water to take my ninety-one nutrients in the morning. Um, I start at 6 a.m. on Monday until 6 a.m. Tuesday. I don't eat and I don't drink. Tuesday, I'll eat for breakfast if I'm hungry. That's the only time I eat breakfast. Or when I eat any time, um, I eat when I'm hungry. You know, when the body asks for food, that's when I eat. Uh, your body will tell you when it's time to eat, Okay. Uh, Tuesday morning for breakfast, um, you know, I may eat something like a dark chocolate almond sandwich, a dark almond uh, chocolate almond sandwich. It's a, what do you call that? Um, I'm sorry. A dark chocolate almond butter sandwich with wild blueberries. You know, instead of peanut butter, um, I eat dark chocolate almond butter. Delicious. Delicious, especially with wild blueberries spread. Um, it's better and it's healthier. I call it the antioxidant blast, uh, the antioxidant blast sandwich. I keep my OREX score above a hundred thousand, which is why I don't get sick. I mean, seriously, I don't get sick for three years. I haven't gotten sick, not even a headache or a common cold. My daily OREX, uh, score is about 200,000 a day, uh, with the exception of the day I fast, you know. My 91 nutrients alone is 100,000 ORACs, over 100,000 ORACs. Plus, 
I also use synonym. I'm a synonym. That's how I used to pronounce it when I was young. Cinnamon. <laughs> on my coffee, I threw a little dash of cinnamon there. Um, also nutmeg, which are also high in ORAC. Um, occasionally, I'll drink like coconut water mixed with three tablespoons of dark chocolate mix uh, in a 16-ounce bottle. Uh, delicious. Delicious. It tastes like Yoohoo, but better and healthier. Uh, plus, I don't have to add sugar. It or it's already sweet from the coconut water. Now you know why I don't get sick. There's a bunch of stuff I do to keep myself healthy. Um, anyway, I digress. One day I'll do a video on how to boost uh, your ORAC and uh, on a daily basis and how to keep the immune system strong. Anyway, um, back to fasting. Every first Monday of the month, Every first Monday of the month, I fast for three days. Woo! <laughs> That's a hard one. <laughs> three days, okay? Um, it's easy for me now because my body is full of 91 nutrients. So, you know, because I take 91 nutrients every day. So I really don't get hungry on the third day. The third day of fasting, I really get hungry. You know, I do drink water on the second and third day of fasting. I do drink water because I don't want to dehydrate. Um, yeah, that could be very dangerous. So I always drink two, at least four or five cups uh, a day. Um, I always drink water um, if if I'm feeling funny. You know, if I'm feeling a little funny and also, you know, like I'm, like I'm dizzy or something, I'll, eat, I'll cheat a little bit and I'll, I'm sure God understands I'll cheat a little bit, like a, a little piece of gluten-free uh, bread uh, with Irish cream butter on it, just a little piece, one little slice, just to make sure I don't pass out. But you know something, I, I've never gotten, you know, dizzy or anything like that after fasting for about three days. Um, I didn't get any dizzy. It hasn't happened yet. It hasn't happened yet. Some people get headaches when they fast or when they get hungry. They also get headaches, uh, and they need to eat something. You need to find out why you're constantly getting headaches when you get hungry. That's not normal. Some people say, that's normal. No, it's not. No, it's not. That could be a deficiency of a specific nutrient, vitamin, uh, an amino acid, uh, it could be a thousand things. Your mother dropped you when you were a baby, and... Your skull got cracked and it didn't heal properly. Uh, it could be a thousand things while you're constantly getting headaches. Let me tell you, folks, on the third day of Christmas, my true love gave to me. No, I'm sorry. We just got uh, we just ended our Christmas, the Christmas holiday. On the third day of fasting, my breath kicks. Woo! As they say in the Bronx. It be kicking. <laughs> Holy bad breath, Batman. The bad breath is ungodly. My goodness. <laughs> the first time I fasted three days, uh, like two years ago, that's when I started fasting. I was like on the third day. It ain't my armpits. What could it be? <laughs> <laughs> it was actually my breath. You know what happens when you uh, when you fast? The reason why your breath smells while you fast, the body is cleansing itself, especially the gut. Uh, that's one of the reasons why people are fasted in the Bible, to cleanse their body from all the crap that they've been eating. Um, they didn't use the laxative like milk of magnesia like we use today. All that crap is nothing but chemicals, chemical that's going into your body, your bloodstream, which can damage many organs, especially the small intestines. Um, there are natural laxatives that are out there in the market. Every year I do a, a liver cleansing um, and a colon cleansing. Uh, there are good products out there. Uh, there's a product that Longevity has for a liver cleanse, for liver cleansing. Um, in fact, it's 2020. It's time for my cleansing. It's time to order my cleansing. Every year I do a little cleansing. Fasting can be 
very dangerous if you're not careful. You can hurt yourself or even kill yourself. If you are deficient from a specific nutrient or specific nutrient, which probably you are, probably deficient of all nutrients, everybody is, except for those that are taking the 91 essential nutrients. If you are deficient from a specific nutrient, you can get a heart attack. Specifically, the nutrients calcium, magnesium, potassium. Oh, and, the, and this is a big one. Selenium plus vitamin D3, which helps to absorb calcium effectively and efficiently. Fill up your body with nutrients before fasting or even before working out in the gym or some kind of strenuous uh, work like heavy lifting. Dr. Wallach, my hero, uh, recommends that big time. He recommends that you fill up your body before you uh, do some kind of fasting or even go to the gym. Got to be careful. You got to be very careful. Quite frankly, uh, here's something that's very interesting. People who go to the gym and professional athletes, uh, they don't live long. Their mortality rate is short. The average professional athlete lives to be 60. Look it up. <laughs> I'm like, wow. Okay, You think, you would think athletes live longer than a non-athletic individual, right? They go, no, they don't last long. And there's a reason for it. You got to um, look it up online. I don't got time to go through all of that. Let me tell you, when I started fasting, after I got rid of all my illnesses and I started fasting, um, holy macro, man, my body feels awesome. It's like, wow, it's like a new body. It, it, it creates a new body. Plus, when you start eating food, your health improves drastically. You know, clean foods. Okay, like no cooking oils, no oils on your salad, no gluten, no sodium nitrates or nitrites, no fried foods, no carbonated drinks, no artificial coloring. You know the 12 deadly foods I've been preaching for three years. You got to get rid of them. My cognitive function is, is working beautifully. A great improvement of my con cognitive functions. I'm more alert. My skin is softer and smoother. Mm. Mm. Let me stop. <laughs> now, check this out. Now, check this out. When I do a three-day fast now every month, I rarely on the third day get bad breath. On the third day, I don't get bad breath as much. Rarely do I get bad breath. That's because I've been eating clean foods and my gut is practically clean. My body, my body is now functioning the way God intended it to. Okay, It's easy for me now to do a three-day fast. My body is used to it and I hardly get hungry on the third day. I get hungry, but not that hungry. Uh, you know, I don't get that hungry. That I want to eat a cow. I want to eat an entire cow. I don't get that hungry. I remember when I fasted for the first time for three days, I thought I was going to die on the third day. I was like, oh, Lord, I got to get something to eat big time. <laughs> if you have some kind of illness uh, that requires you to eat, it's not a good idea to fast, according to many health experts. Uh, you know, uh, what do you think you need to do? Um if you want to, you know, do a fasting, what do, uh, you want to start this uh, fast, what do you think you need to do? You got to get rid of your illnesses, okay? Your body is out of balance from all the crap you've been eating, especially all the chemicals that's in your food, causing damage. Uh, the food you're eating is giving you hormonal imbalances, uh, both in men and women. Some of you women at an early age are already getting metal, uh, menopause. Uh, by the way, some of you young women are not getting menopause. You're getting a disorder called amenorrhea. Your doctor doesn't know about that disorder. You ask the doctor, what is amenorrhea? He's going to say, I am on a what? I hate what? <laughs> amenorrhea, that's a disorder you get when your menstrual abnormally stops for a period of time. Uh, sometimes a long period of time. 
okay? Then you're getting hot flushes, sometimes called hot, hot flashes, uh, bad moods, mood disorders. I know, lady, it's horrible. I know, it's horrible. I had a lot of women who suffer from that. Women clients, excuse me, let me be specific. Female clients, uh, I know that sounded weird. I had a lot of women <laughs> that had that disorder. Female clients. <laughs> you know, uh, I thought women were more health conscious. Uh, the obesity statistics in women is right up there with the men. According to the CDC, in 2017 in Georgia, 68% men are obese versus 61% of women. Ladies, what are you doing over there in Georgia, huh? What are you eating? What do you, what do you ladies are eating? Okay, what the heck are you doing? Mississippi is another state, uh, another state with a, with a major obesity problem. 71% of males are obese versus 69% of women. My God in heaven, what are you ladies doing in Mississippi? Okay. It's mainly the southern states uh, that that the obesity uh, epidemic is climbing through the roof. It's all over America, but the southern states, whoo, the obesity is climbing up to the top. You know why, right? Do you know why? Fried foods. You folks in, in the southern state love fried foods. That's one of the 12 deadly foods everyone is eating. You got to get rid of that. Remember. There are 900 illnesses that can be reversed. 900 diseases are linked to a deficient or deficiency. Big pharma, do, they don't want you to know that. Okay, They're trying to suppress that information from you. They succeeded in the past, but since the launch of the internet, that information is everywhere, and now big pharma is in a panic. <clears throat> They're in a panic. Big pharma is in a panic, okay? Many are discovering the dangers of vaccines and certain medical drugs. It's getting exposed, folks, it's getting exposed. Let me tell you something, the biggest enemy for big pharma, all these pharmaceutical companies, their biggest enemy are healthy people that do not depend on their drugs and their therapeutics, okay? Let me rephrase that. Let me rephrase that. The worst enemy for big pharma is an educated person that knows how to keep themselves healthy. And the healthy person is educating others how to get healthy. That's their worst enemy. Like me, Dr. McCola, Dr. Glidden, Dr. Wallach. And the list goes on. Millions of people are now getting their families healthy, their friends healthy. It's the cat is out of the bag, baby. The cat is out of the bag. The healthy are hurting big farmers pockets. We're not dependent on their therapeutics. Now they they can suppress the information. Now that they can't they can't suppress the information because it's all over the place. It's spreading like wildflower, uh, wildfire. I was going to say wildflower. Wildfire. Fire. It's, it's out there. It's spreading. Forget it. It's all over the internet how to get healthy. What does Big Pharma now do? What do they do now? What's their tactic now? Well, they run to the government and propose mandated ty tyrannical laws forcing you to get inoculated with 40 vaccines, okay? That's what they're doing now. They're passing laws, uh, religious exemption laws. Now you can't claim religion anymore. If you believe, uh, if, you're, if you're a Muslim or a Buddhist or whatever religion you are, you cannot claim religious exemption. You got to get that vaccine and your children got to get vaccine. doesn't matter what religion. They're passing these laws now. New Jersey, uh, is next. New Jersey is next. In fact, soon they're going to start voting on that. You know, <laughs> another another tactic that they use is the scare tactics. They try to frighten you. Okay, uh, they go to the you know the mainstream news 
you know, they'll say something like, Mizu outbreak, you're going to die. If there's a Mizu outbreak. They make it sound like it's the Black Plague. You know, let me tell you, 300 people in a, in a country infected with the Mizu, it's not an outbreak. That's not an outbreak. I remember back in the days, you know, when back in the days when you got the measles or the chicken pox, parents were like, oh, sicky poo, you sicky poo. They put you in bed. Then they apply calamine lotion. Uh, if you were a white parent, you would put calamine lotion on your child. Puerto Ricans, we use Vicks for everything. <laughs> Puerto Ricans use Vicks. My great grandmother, God rest her soul, uh, thought Vicks was the cure for everything. Three days later, you're back in school playing with your friends. Today, when a child or two in school gets the chicken pox, oh my God, shut down the schools. Oh, we got an outbreak. <laughs> Take your kid to the hospital. He's going to die. Go get that vaccination. My goodness, man. <laughs> Take it easy. The fear in society is getting nuts, man, with this stuff. Relax, okay? You're going to scare the poor kid, okay? The child now is in a panic. The kid is panicking. The kid will probably die from, from fear that you put in him. <laughs> now, now, the vaccine schedule for a child is ungodly, man. You got to get this vaccination for your children and for you too. Even though you're healthy, even though you're healthy, you got to get them because someday you're going to get sick. You're going to get sick. You need these 40 vaccinations and the flu vaccine every year. You got to take it every year. You're going to get sick. You're going to get sick. We don't want you to get sick and get others sick. Really? 60% of Americans are sick. You know what that means? When 60% of Americans, your therapeutics are not working. Okay? They're not working. Get your heads out of your culo, America. We have a problem in America. America, before fixing the climate, uh, you know, the climate change, before fixing the gender pronouns, the he, she's, and the he, they's, and the it, they, that can wait. We have a serious health crisis in America. Get your flipping heads out of your butts, okay? Look, man, I'm not a medical doctor. I'm not a nutritionist. I'm just someone with a substandard uh, liberal arts degree who was very sick uh, in the unhealthiest county of New York City. And I did my research. I did my research. The medical industry is losing credibility particularly the allopathic medical industry. In fact, they already lost their credibility, okay? Their credibility is in the crapper, okay? Their reputation, their integrity, the public trust, the, the public can't even trust them anymore, okay? The public is starting to wake up. I don't think the allopathic medical industry can be fixed. I don't think they can fix it. The corruption has reached to the top. Keep this in mind, folks. I need you to keep this in mind. A government, whether it's democratic, communist, fascist, Marxist, a republic, it doesn't matter what form of government, when you force its citizens to do something against their will, they're going to rebel. Okay, And you're going to have a civil war on your hand, and it's going to get ugly. It is going to get ugly. Right now, it's a protest. A little protest here, a little protest over there in New Jersey, uh, a little protest over here in California, and then the wrong decision is going to be made, and bang, you got a civil war in your hands. You have ignored this problem too long, America, and now look where we're at. Look where we're at, okay? Anyway, I ranted enough. Uh, so in closing, I got I to gotta close. Back to the question at hand. Do you have to eat three meals a day, especially breakfast? 
Well, you know what? God has not been wrong since Genesis 1-1. Since eternity, he has not been wrong. And he'll never be wrong. He's never going to be wrong. Remember, God is the same yesterday, today, and forever. When mankind and medical science cannot settle the issue. When mankind and science cannot settle the issue. Thy word is settled. Thy word is settled in heaven. Psalms 119, 89. And who is the word? The one and the only, the word of God, the Lord of lords, the King of kings, King Jesus, John 1, 1. He is the word who created all things. By him, all things were created, including your body. He knows how your body operates. He knows how to keep it healthy. It's up to you to follow the instructions. Stay away from the 12 bad foods and, uh, you know, the bad foods that man claims it's healthy for you and safe to eat. Those 12 bad foods. Watch the video on my website, NutriWarriors.org, the 12 bad foods. You may also want to watch Bronx Citizen Cures his 14 diseases. Take your 91 essential nutrients every day appropriate for your body. It is mandatory to supplement the 91 essential nutrients because the foods you're eating are depleted from the nutrients um, that your body requires. The nutrients that the body requires. The food is depleted. Even organic foods are depleted from nutrients. You're not going to get all the nutrients, not even from organic foods. Okay? So please, go to uh, NutriWarriors.org, watch, uh, watch the video, and I guarantee you, everything's going to be all right. Everything's going to be all right. I hope you enjoyed this video, but most of, mo uh, most of all, you learned something. I'm Andres from NutriWarriors.org and from the Bronx of New York City. Peace. Stay healthy. God bless you.